not magnetic pole. And uh, I will talk about some work that we have been doing over the last few years uh, with Gauthier Hulot from IPGP, Larry Newitt from Boreal Language and Science Services in Canada, and also with Jean-Jacques Orgeval from the Association Polyarctic. So first, I mean, I guess most of you know what is the North Magnetic Pole, but I'd, I'd just like to recall briefly. It is the point at the Earth's surface where the magnetic field is exactly vertical. And so this should, this should not be confused, of course, with the geomagnetic pole, which is the point uh, of the intersection of the dipole axis with the Earth's surface. And it should not be confused with um, also the point where the core field is exactly vertical, because the North Magnetic Pole includes all the sources, including the crust. Nevertheless, the core is, of course, dominating uh, the crust as, uh, uh, as far as uh, you are far enough from the ground. So, an interesting fact is that the North Magnetic Pole moves during the day due to the electrical currents in the ionosphere and so this and the magnetosphere and this creates some uncertainty about the exact position of the North Magnetic Pole and this is why it's impossible to define uh, at less than about 40 kilometers the position of the North Magnetic Pole. And last, the North Magnetic Pole is directly observable by ground survey within this arrow margin and was first observed by Jim Ross in 1831. So where is the North Magnetic Pole now? Uh, I was fortunate to participate to the latest survey to the North Magnetic Pole in 2007, which was organized by uh, the Polyarctic uh, project led uh, by Jean-Jacques Orgeval. And we have, we have been able to localize this, the North Magnetic Pole here, at this position here in April 2007. This is the Canadian Arctic, this is Ellesmer Island, and this is the Greenland here. And so as you see, the North Magnetic Pole moved since the first determination by, of, the, of its position by James Ross in 1831 by several thousands of kilometers. Here, this is Larry Newitt, my colleague, uh, carrying out a measurement on the ice shelf uh, by minus 25 degrees uh, without uh, gloves, uh, with a DI flux uh, theodolite, and with the plane ready to, to depart from the ice in case the ice just collapses under our feet. So a few more details about this survey. Uh, that was a bit heavy for the logistics because we were quite remote from the land. So we had to use two uh, twin otter aircrafts, one being used to bring us some fuel to, to being able to come back. So the logistics was quite heavy, but it was, uh, apart from that, uh, we were able to do very nice measurements. And particularly, we pre-positioned the North Magnetic Pole using some satellite data and so we were able to do these four measurements here, P1, P2, P3, and P4, all around the estimated position of the North Magnetic Pole. And using these four uh, measurements, um, we were able to determine quite precisely the location of the North Magnetic Pole. As you see, it's about 700 kilometers from the nearest airfield in the Canadian uh, Arctic Station, Eureka. Okay. Some more recent results have been brought by the IGRF-11. So IGRF is Inter International Geomagnetic Reference Field, and uh, it is calculated every five years by an international team under the, the, the helmet of uh, IAGA. And there is a working group uh, who is uh, uh, dedicated to this task. And so the latest IGRF was calculated last year in uh, uh, around October, November, by various groups, uh, and the, the IGRF says that uh, the position, 2010 position of the North Magnetic Pole is here at about 85 degrees north. So it's, the, the North Magnetic Pole is still moving in the same direction as before, and the, the IGRF estimates its position for 2015 here, even closer to the North Pole. If it continues this way, the North Magnetic Pole should be entering uh, the Russian uh, uh, the Russian Sea, I mean, the, especially the Laptev Sea, uh, in about 20 years. And it should pass, it should cross the 180 degree meridian around 2020. So it's quite soon. I mean, for the geomagnetic timescales, it's a very rapid event. So the, the scientific question that we, we, uh, we got uh, into was, um, why did the North Magnetic Pole suddenly accelerate? And it's very striking when you look at this graph 
you see the drift speed of the North Magnetic Pole since 1831 uh, by the first Russ's location and you see that the, the drift has been between 0 and about 15 kilometers per year for about 150 years and suddenly in the late 1980s the North Magnetic Pole accelerated up to 55 kilometers per year so th this is a very dramatic and sudden acceleration and then since the beginning of the 2000 uh, decade it, it's th the speed stabilized and, and kept the same level at about 55 kilometers per year so the question is why did it so much accelerate? So in order to answer this question, what we did is um, we, we first looked at the secular variation in uh, the North Polar region. So the secular variation is the time derivative of the core magnetic field. And uh, what you see on this map is that the integrated secular variation over 1989-2002, uh, which is exactly the time interval where the North Magnetic Pole accelerated, the, the, the integrated secular variation was maximum in the Canadian Arctic, exactly where the North Magnetic Pole is located, and here in Russian Siberia over there. And it's much higher than in other places at the Earth's surface. It's, it's more than 50 uh, nanotesla uh, so per year. So, so what you see here, this is confirmed by some ground observation by magnetic observatories. So these are, this is one observatory in Canada, in Resolute Bay, so very, very up north here in this location, right in the circle. And you see that the X component, the, the time derivative of the X component is increasing, is increasing quite significantly with, over the 1990s. The same phenomenon ha happens in Thule, Thule uh, Kanak, now it's the new name of the observatory in Greenland, so also in the same area. So unfortunately for that period of time, we didn't have data uh, for the Russian, Russian side, but I have good hope that this will be soon uh, corrected and that we have data the next time the North Magnetic Pole accelerates this way. So that's, that's the first observation. But so far, that's just an observation. So now the, the question is, is this increase of secular variation responsible for the North Magnetic Pole acceleration? Or is there something else? And uh, what is particularly uh, also observable in the, North, in the Arctic region is that the gradient of the magnetic field is quite low. So the question is, what is the biggest contributor to, the, to this acceleration? Is it the gradient or is it the, secular, the change in secular variation? And so, in fact, it's possible mathematically to express the speed of the North Magnetic Pole in terms of the gradient and the secular variation. And then by plotting the secular variation at the North Magnetic Pole location using geomagnetic field models, we see that most of the, the speed increase actually comes from the change in secular variation. A, little, a, a smaller part comes from uh, a low gradient, so a flattening of the, of the gradient in this area, but the largest part comes from an increase in secular variation. So this shows that this, this large change in secular variation in the Arctic region is responsible for the North Magnetic Pole acceleration. So now, of course, I mean, we are still at the Earth's surface. Now, let's, let's get down to the core surface and try to understand what's happening at the core surface, because this is where the phenomenon originates. And if we extrapolate this, the, the same geomagnetic model, so this is the comprehensive model 4, which, which was uh, calculated by an international team by some Danish colleagues and some colleagues at NASA, we, you, it's possible to downward continue this model to the core mantle boundary, and we see that uh, there is a very large change in the uh, secular variation of the radial magnetic field at the core mantle boundary in this area. So it's, what's a bit puzzling is that the North Magnetic Pole is here and the change in secular variation is there. It's, it's the new Siberian Islands. So this is in Russia. Uh, I forgot the name of these islands in Russian, but new Siberian Islands, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. And, and so the question is, why is this related? I mean, are these two points related somehow? I mean, what happens here at the core surface, is it related to what happens here at the Earth's surface? And 
the answer is yes, and to see this, it's needed to calculate the green function that relates the magnetic field at the core surface and the magnetic field at the Earth's surface. So this is a potential field. So you can relate the field at the core surface and the field at the Earth's surface using a green function. And if you plot this green function for the X component, the horizontal component, which is responsible for the speed of the north magnetic pole, you see that the maximum effect uh, is centered under New Siberia and islands. So it is not, uh, it's not by chance that it's happening. I mean, we have a large change of secular variation under New Siberian islands, which is exactly right in the middle of the maximum of the, of the green function. And when we convoluate both functions, we get uh, the largest change in the north magnetic pole area at the Earth's surface. So this is a purely geometrical effect, a property of the potential nature of the geomagnetic field. So now what's happening, more difficult question now, what is happening inside the core? What could be responsible for this large uh, secular variation change at the core surface? So now we enter the realm of hypothesis and uh, speculations, some, some would say. Um, there are some very interesting numerical simulations that have been carried out by uh, a team led by Julien Hubert at IPGP a few years ago. And in these 3D geodynamo simulations, this is the inner core here. And here at the top, this is the core mantle boundary. What they see is that within the cylinder that is tangent to the inner core, above the inner core, sometimes there are some plumes, some twisted plumes of fluid going up. And this fluid takes the magnetic field and, and switches and, and twists the magnetic field. And they call this event the polar magnetic upwellings. And these events create at the core surface some uh, pairs of patches of opposite polarity for the magnetic field and also for the secular variation. And we see the same pair, uh, similar pairs of patches in the secular variation in 1989 and 2002. So this is very reminiscent from what's happening in the numerical simulations. It is, unfortunately, we are not able to downwards continue the field within the core. This is the, the main problem. For, for this uh, for core geomagnetism. But at least we have a similar uh, surface characteristics as in these numerical simulations. Another uh, point that, that points towards this, uh, this, this, this hypothesis is that there, there is some emerging uh, reversed flux here. Uh, this is the cylinder tangent to the inner core, and there is some emerging reversed flux here, which, which suggests that there could be some magnetic diffusion in this area, and this is also something that is present when there is a polar magnetic upwelling. One more uh, argument uh, supporting this hypothesis of polar magnetic upwelling is this laboratory experiments by Jonathan Ornu of UCLA and, and colleagues in 2003, uh, who observed, those, so these are experiments in water, so there is no magnetic field, but they also observed this kind of phenomenon where there are plumes within a sphere of water uh, and, and plumes going up. So an interesting question is, uh, is this process involving magnetic diffusion? And uh, the answer is that probably yes, uh, precisely because there is some emergence of magnetic flux in this area, although we are not sure because <coughs> there, are, there are some large uncertainties in the magnetic field in this area due to external current systems. So uh, we cannot prove that this is uh, from diffusive origin, but there are, this is the simplest explanation uh, to, to, to assume that there is diffusion and hence that there is some magnetic flux expulsion. Magnetic flux expulsion is something that has been predicted by theory a long time ago, as far as uh, Allen and Bullard work in 1958, and several other people have worked on this, Jeremy Bloxham and Drew, and recent numerical simulations I've also observed this kind of events where a convective upwelling is twisting the magnetic field lines, creating a pair of patches of opposite polarity at the core surface, and, and then creating um, an area where there is some magnetic diffusion. So this could be what is happening right under New Siberian Islands. This is our hypothesis, that this is happening under New Siberian Islands. And uh, a change in this phenomenon probably an acceleration created the acceleration of the North Magnetic Pole. Okay, what, what also gives us confidence in this assumption is that uh, similar 
uh, magnetic flux expulsions were observed in the South Atlantic area uh, in the recent work that we have been doing with Niels Olsen <coughs> from Copenhagen and where we using uh, CHAMP, Hirschstedt and Maxat satellite data we, we could see that we could show that there, there is a magnetic diffusion in this area. So this is something that is observable also in other areas at the core surface. So I'd like to conclude. Um, so the unusually large acceleration of the non-magnetic pole over the 1990s is caused by a large and localized change in the circular variation of the radial magnetic field at the common tool boundary, which is below the new Siberian islands. So this is something that I think is quite demonstrated now. Um, now we hypothesize that the core process at the origin of this circular variation change could be an helical plume rising within the core from the inner core boundary to the core mantle boundary. And uh, this process is likely to involve some magnetic diffusion, so like in some other areas at the core surface. What is important is that what, what this study shows is that uh, we are not able to predict the future evolution, the future drift of the north magnetic pole. Because, I mean, this explanation doesn't tell us if the plume in the core uh, would accelerate or stop accelerating. So it's, it's impossible with our present understanding to, to forecast the north magnetic pole evolution. So it may go to Russia if it continues like this, or it may not. Thank you very much. <laughs>